Today I'm going to do a review and my thoughts on the Crash Pad Swags. I have the single and I have the double. Well actually the single is my dad's and mine's is the double but I've got them both here to have a look at them. Quick disclaimer to answer the question that everyone always pins you on when you do these YouTube product review videos. I've purely done this video to answer all the requests I've had for it and to answer all the questions I get about these Crash Pad Swags. We were given these swags for free a couple of years ago just to use in the videos, but I don't really work with Crashpad anymore. And I wasn't paid or asked to do this video, it's just my honest thoughts and impressions. First thing is price of these. I'm having a look on the Crashpad website now. The double is 498 Australian dollars, this one. And the single is 418 Australian dollars. We'll do the setup of the double now, we'll time how long it takes. Start this timer, three, Two, one, go. One thing I do like about these trash pad swags is they come with these nice big bags standard compared to say the old ARB one I had. You actually had to buy the bag for it separately. And there's lots of room in the bag. Say compared to the ARB one was good. It had lots of room as well. But my old Kings one it was a nightmare to try and get that big double swag back in there myself. Sorry, I'm wasting time talking here. I should be setting up. So you simply roll it out. You've got your poles there separate. You got your middle one. And then you got your end ones. I actually got a spare one in there as well. So you only need two, one for each end. But I do carry a spare one. The idea of these is you start at the top middle and then work your way back down either side. Over to the other end, same thing, start at the top middle, work your way back down. And then lastly, you got the middle pole here, push that back over the other side. And in it pops. These two middle clips. And then you just need to straighten it up a little bit. They are a freestanding swag, so that it is it. <laughs> it does look a little bit wonky, I just need to go around and fix it up. But that is your freestanding swag set up. If you want to then peg them down, you can if it's very windy, or if you want to peg down these flaps as well. Now, stop the timer there. That was three minutes, 17 seconds, but to be honest, I spent, <laughs> wasted probably 30 seconds there talking, but let's just say you're setting it up at camp, having a bit of a chat. You're looking at about three minutes setup time. The first question about poles, have I broke any? I've broke poles on every single swag I've owned, and this one is no exception. I'm trying to think if I've broke one or two of these. I think I broke two in about two and a half years of using it very regularly, which is not too bad. They just seem to weaken over time and if you get the angle slightly wrong, they can break. These are actually newer ones they do now. They're thinner, but they seem to work better because they're more stretchy and they're not as brittle. Haven't actually snapped any of the new ones now, so they may have helped solve that problem a little bit. One good thing I will say about Crash Pad is you can jump on their website and buy a new pole for I think it's about 10 or 15 dollars. Compared to other companies it can be quite hard to get a new pole. Canvas is nice and thick on them. One good thing is they do have overlaps on all the spots so for example there's your zipper but you've got two fold overs to help that water run off. Underneath them you've got a PVC I think it is bottom that way it's completely waterproof you're not going to have water soak up in through there. The only thing I will say, on a previous swag, this came rounds and came up the first 100 mils or so. So if you actually had water sort of flooding into your swag, you're a bit more protected. But in saying that, it's never been an issue anyway. I haven't ever decided that I wanted to set my swag up in a creek or something and see how well it handles the water. Now if we hop in the swag, openings are the same on both sides. It's a full open up so you take your canvas off and then you've got a second zipper for your 
mesh net, fly net, mozzie net, whatever it want to be. The zippers are good quality on these and the general feel of all this is quite nice quality and it's we've stood the test of time. You know, two and a half years of using this, I've never wrecked a zip, I've never punctured the canvas or anything like that. The material is of it all is nice, solid material that's going to last. Open that up, then you've got a full opening on it. The other side is exactly the same, I'll open that up in a minute, which means you can have both sides fully open, which is amazing in summer because you get a heap of breeze, heap of airflow through the whole thing. One question people had was about sagging of it, because there is no middle pole, it's never really worried me. But as you can see, you definitely do get that bit of sagging there. Once you lift the canvas off a bit, then it doesn't sag in as much. The swag is pretty much the same end to end. It doesn't really matter what end you put your head or your feet, which I did find handy because you, you, you could just set it up and then you could just decide once you set up which end you want to sleep at. The only thing is one end has pockets, so you may want to consider trying to aim for that as your head end. Both have the same open airflow zip. This can't then open. You, you've just got the fly net mesh area there. Now you've got a little back bit, so once you peg that down, it will help all the water flow off, meaning you can keep that open during a night if it's a bit rainy and then close these down and still get airflow. A big question and one that is very important to me is mattress comfort. And this is where I'd say the crash pad swag does lack a little bit. The mattress that came with it, I used for the first few months. It's all right for your weekenders, but I was doing bigger trips in it, one week, two weeks, and your hip starts to dig into it during the night, I found for me. And it wasn't quite enough comfort. It's a 50 mil mattress. It doesn't have those little um, foam egg topper things they put on some mattresses. If you buy one of these swags, that is one place I would consider you may have to upgrade. You may have to upgrade to a thicker mattress. Or I have a mate that has one of these, Shad, and he got an extra little 30 mil egg foam topper to put on it. The good thing is you can still roll everything up all nice and good, your bag's good. To solve that problem, I actually put my old mattress in there from my ARB swag. The ARB swag mattresses are the best mattress I've ever owned. 70 mil, it's got your, oh, I don't know where the zip is though enough, but it's got your foam, your egg toppers, and this is just a beautiful mattress for a swag. I've never found anyone that's better than that. So when you buy one of the crash pad swags, that is one area that you may have to improve. But give it a test out first, see what you think. I know some people are happy with the quality of the mattress. The next question is in regards to weatherproof, things like wind, snow, rain, depending on where you camp. Swags are brilliant in the wind. You get very little wind noise, you can sort of bunker down in them. In regards to water and rain, I gave it a good weatherproofing when I got it. The first couple of times I had it in rain, it still seemed to sink to seep through your like you're stitching a bit as well. But then the more I used it, the less and less that water seepage came through. But generally, most of the times I'd have it under the awning and then you'd get a bit of spray in there, but that'd never be enough. I'll open up this other side to show you what it looks like. A couple of things I really like about it. It's the quickest setup and pack up time I have experienced with a swag. And I like the design, how you can just have it super open can lay either end, plenty of room. And they're a nice big wide double as well. You can fit two people in them comfortably. I've never had any room issues with fitting two adults in there. It was generally Kai and I just sleeping in it. I've slept in here with my girlfriend too, obviously plenty of room for both of us. Better take my shoes off for when I lay down in it, but what am I? I think just under six foot and there's plenty of room there for me. While we are going on the review, I'll set the single one up as well, because I'm actually sleeping in the rooftop tent now. I've stopped using the double, but Dad is still using the single on all the trips away. This is the King single. They're still quite, they're quite a big swag, aren't they? There's plenty of room in them. Yeah, miles of room. Yeah, it's a big, comfortable do, swag. Do you, without me, I haven't said anything to you before this, what do you think of the swag? Do you like it? Yeah, I feel like it's a comfortable little cot. Now, Dad was sleeping on his, just on the ground. 
you then got a stretcher to put yours on. Yep, yep, so, which made a hell of a difference. So maybe just put your stretcher, open your stretcher up, and then we'll drop the swag on it. It's, that's, uh, it's not a crash pad stretcher, that's just a drifter one, drifter Stockton, I think it is. Now the only thing of these is that's for a normal single swag, whereas this is a king single swag, so it does overhang a little bit, but that hasn't worried you, has it? Not in the slightest. The, the overhang's minimal. It's probably it's about 65 mil either side, and it doesn't seem to affect the comfort position of it. Dad and I set up the single here as well. While we are going, just to see what the single looks like, you've got a couple of spare ones here as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I've broke two. How many have you broke? Two as well? Yeah, two as well. Yeah. yeah, but now, as I was saying before, these new ones seem to be less breakable, potentially. They're a bit more stretchy. The other, uh, the thicker ones are a bit more brittle. Brittle. <laughs> yeah, these don't feel like you're breaking, trying to break them as you bend them. Yeah, they yeah, feel like they're more stretchy in them. Yeah. So what do you prefer of the... Like, what's the benefit for you of now using the stretcher? The height factor straight up is the biggest single thing that you, you just you up off the ground and you, you go to sleep feeling like you're only sharing yourself in a swag and not with everything else that's crawling around on the ground. Stuff away from snakes and lizards and spiders and all that. Yeah, because I've had snakes under tents and that type of thing and had to drag them out. Remember that time of barring you had to keep pulling that swag, that snake yeah. out from under yeah, the tent and, and throwing and, it down and, the paddock. And he kept wanting to come back. <laughs> and you're up off the rocks, that's a good thing. With swags, you do have to pick the right ground for. Obviously grass, sand is ideal, rocks and hard dirt, depending on the situation. This will solve the problem. You're up off and then you've got the one flat surface. As Dad was saying, it's a knee height to get in and out, makes it much easier. You can then put boots and stuff underneath your swag as well. Is it any more comfortable? It's not really more comfortable? Not really, no. 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 So it's worth bringing the extra the extra stretcher on your trip? No doubt about for it. This, for the swag? Yep. Yeah. You get into that at a night and you, you feel like you're in paradise. And the King single is the same as the double really. It all works the same. You've got the same openings, the same zips. Once again, Dad upgraded to the old ARB mattress we had inside. Because we use those crash pad, that's what I was saying before, the crash pad ones are maybe lacking a little bit, yep. the original mattresses. Yeah, yeah. So people probably need to get a little topper for it or upgrade like we did. And then, yeah, there's plenty of room in there for one person. I know some people even use the King Singles for an adult and a kid. I think I've covered most of the main points there you consider when buying a swag. Compared to the King's one I owned previously, definitely much better. Compared to the ARB one, I like this one better now that I've upgraded the mattress. I put out a questionnaire on Instagram to see if anyone had anything in particular they want answered. I'll run through that. Plastic buckles, are they flimsy and any issues thus far? No, the buckles are really strong on them, as is the... What's the material used to pull the bucket? The buckles, the straps around it. They are really good quality, they're nice and big, nice and solid. Actually, one thing I'll mention is you can pack all your bedding up in there and still get it zipped up all good and get it in the bag. By myself, I can do two sheets and like a nice big doona in there and I'll take the pillows out and then I can roll it up myself, buckle it up, get it in the bag, no problems. If I have a second person with me, we roll it up with the pillows in there too. That's one thing I really like about them. You can get all your bedding in there, leave it in there. When you get to camp every night, roll it out, set it up, it's all ready to go. Make sure when you buy it, you do season it, which is a big spray down, a dry off, another big spray down, a dry off. I did that, that will help with the waterproof. And then as I said, the more times I had it in the rain, the more it seemed to seal up the canvas. Cause canvas needs to be wet and then dried to help seal however it all works. There is a lot of questions here about does it sag in at the sides like other similar swags. I did kind of talk about that. It does a little bit, but it's never worried me personally. Before I finish the video, I will make honorable mention to the crash pad sleeping bag or sleeping system. This is without a doubt the best 
sleeping bag, blanket setup I have ever owned and used camping. It is absolutely amazing. What it is, they're a little bit of money. I think they're 200 or just over $200. There's seven piece system or seven setup, seven different options you can have. When you buy it, it all comes zipped up in one big sleeping bag, which is a winter one. It's rated to minus 10 or minus 15. From there, you can fold it open once and you'll have a nice big double sleeping bag for two people, which is not rated as much because you've only got one layer of them, but it's a beautiful big dual double sleeping bag. Then you can actually pull that all apart and you get to this stage where you've now got two separate single sleeping bags. Amazing. And then what we normally do is I'll use them as two blankets. So I'll just have them folded flat open. In mild conditions, I'll put one underneath this for a bit of extra comfort and then one over the top. And then in winter, that's normally plenty enough to just have both on the top of us. So I find that this dual sleeping bag system is suitable for both winter and summer. I can highly recommend that. Back to the swags, hopefully I answered all the questions that you had. It gives you a little bit of an insight into them. And just remember, this is my personal opinion and experience. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm correct. Other people may have had different experiences with them. So if you have used one of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know. If you've got any other questions, let me know. Done. That's a wrap, boy. From a swag. From. But I've slept in there. Which girlfriend? Probably already been asked, as it's a staple question, but would you buy it again? I would definitely buy this swag. Well, I didn't actually buy it, so. From there, you can fold it out once. From? Okay, yeah, yeah. <coughs> From, is that right? Yeah. So I can't. <laughs> From? From. From. There. From there, hang on. From, is that right? Yeah. 